Welcome students to the channel Stat Inquiry. Here we are going to start a lecture on the topic Measures of Dispersion. Okay, and this video is specially for the BSc nursing students. Although the video is made to keep in mind about the BSc nursing student, we cover almost all the measures which are used in dispersion. Okay, so the students from other background also can watch the video to get the concept of all the measures which are used in dispersion. Okay, so let's start the video. So in my previous video also, I have started the video with a data. Okay, and here also I am going to use the same data. Okay, so I have discussed about measures of central tendency and uh, the measures of central tendency gives us what? The measures of central tendency gives us one representative value of the whole data. Okay, so this is the example of 100 patient which come to a hospital in a day. Okay, and the pulse rate of the 100 patients are recorded. Okay, so if someone asks you that what is the average pass rate of the 100 patient who visited today in our hospital okay so this value how we can get we can get this value by using the measures of central tendency okay so the measures of central tendency gives us one representative value for this whole data for this whole data okay for example we have calculated the mean from this uh, 100 patient okay and it comes out uh, as uh, 78 okay so this is your representative value for the whole 100 patient okay so you can told that your yeah, average uh, pass rate of the patient visited our hospital today is uh, 78 okay now someone may ask that what is the variation within the data okay so is it possible that all the 100 patients have the same pulse rate 78? So obviously no. Okay. So someone has 75 pulse rate, someone has 72 pulse rate, someone has 74 pulse rate like that. Okay. So obviously the pulse rate is going to vary from person to person. Okay. And uh, if you see about the variation within the data, along with the measures of central tendency then it means that you are giving the complete information about the data isn't it okay so this is the importance of measures of dispersion so there are various measures through which you can calculate that how much uh, variation are present within the data okay dispersion is uh, also called uh, you know variability scattered as or spread okay it means that uh, you can get an idea that uh, from observation to observation how much distance are there okay and how much distance is there between the observations of the data and the average of the data okay now you can see this example okay there are three series okay and uh, all the series have uh, five observations okay and you can see that if we calculate the mean from all the three series you get the same mean okay but you cannot say that the mean of all the three series is same that's why the series are also same okay because you can simply see that the series one has uh, five observations and all the observations are 60 60 60 okay but in series 2 we can see that there is 30 50 85 75 60 okay but the mean is coming which is equal to 60 and in the third series you can see that 10 60 90 then 90 and 50 okay and the mean is coming which is equal to 60 okay so in the first series since all the observations are same it means what it means that there is no variation within the data okay but in the second series and in the third series there is variation within the data because the observations are not same okay they are varying from each other okay that's why variation is present within the series two and three okay and the measures of dispersion told us about this variability within the data 
okay and uh, the measures of dispersion reflects how closely the data clustered around the measure of central tendency okay it represents the deviation of value of individual observation on either side of the central value in a set of data okay so what does it mean so this is the criteria of central tendency that uh, uh, whatever value we find for the measure of central tendency around that value uh, most of the observations are situated okay that is near to that value most of the observations we get of the data okay now look at this picture if we look at this line so this line saying is what this straight line is saying about the center okay center of the data that means suppose for example we have calculated the mean and mean is situated here okay so in the first series you can see that some of the observations are here some of the observations are here some of the observations are here okay and some of the observations are here some of the observations are here and some of the observations are here okay that means some of the observations before the center or mean or some of the observation after the center or the mean okay so you can see that there is a distance between the observations okay and this distance are what this distance are the variability within the observation isn't it and from the measure of dispersion we are going to calculate this variability which are present within the data okay so in this line you can see that there is one single point it means that all the observations have the same value okay for example you have seen about series 1 okay and in series 1 you can see that there are five observations and all the five observations are same okay and the mean is coming which is equal to 60 okay so there is no variation within the data since all the observations are at the same point okay now if we look at this you can see that some of the observations are this side some of the observations are that side okay so if we compare these three lines so you can see that there is no variation within the data because all the observations are the same okay and here pretty much variation is there in compare to this one because you can see that these observations are near to each other okay in compare to this one okay so here we get larger variation in compare to this one and here we get no variation within the data so this is the concept of variation and from the measures of dispersion we are going to calculate this variation of the data okay so if you look at this picture then it will be more clear to you okay now put the class interval or observation on x axis and frequency on y axis we may get this type of graph okay so if the data has a larger variation in that case we will get a curve like this okay and if the data has a smaller variation then we get a curve like this okay you can see that this curve is flatter than this one okay so if the variation is less in that case we get a peaked curve okay and if the variation is uh, larger in that case we get a you know flatter curve in compared to this one okay so from the frequency polygon or frequency curve also this is what this is simply the frequency curve isn't it so from the diagram of frequency polygon or frequency curve also we may get uh, you know a rough idea that uh, how much variation is uh, present within the data okay if we get a flatter frequency curve it means that uh, there is very much variation present within the data okay and if we get a picked frequency curve it means that uh, most of the observations are uh, you know clustered around the center okay that means uh, there is less variation within the observations okay so this is about variation within the data okay now how we calculate the variation within the data okay 
so now what is the importance of measures of dispersion the measure of variance or dispersion is an important tool in biostatistical studies because biological phenomena are more valuable than physical and chemical phenomena okay because uh, you can understand that biology or you know health sector it is about the life of a human being okay so these are very important for example individual variations are found in hemoglobin percentages in the number of rbc cell or wbc cell okay and even in the cure rate of patient having same age and sex that means different patient are there having the same illness okay and they are given the same drug okay but instead of that there may be a difference in the cure rate of the patients after taking the same drug and having the same age and sex okay so the major objectives of methods of dispersion are written here okay if you want to take notes from here then you can take it okay which i have already discussed now what is the requirement of a good measure of dispersion okay so measure of dispersion should be precisely and clearly defined it should be easily understood as a measure of variability in the data measure of dispersion should be based on all the observations of the data okay it should not be influenced by the extreme values okay and it should be easy to calculate and it should be capable of being treated algebraically okay so these are the requirements of a good measure of dispersion okay that means whatever measures are going to discuss for the measures of dispersion all these measures should have this characteristic so that they can be regarded as a good measure of dispersion okay now come to this measures of dispersion can be divided into two parts absolute measures and then relative measures okay so what are the absolute measures absolute measures are the range quartile deviation mean deviation standard deviation okay and relative measures are what coefficient of variation coefficient of quartile deviation coefficient of mean deviation okay so now you can ask me that what is the difference between absolute measures or relative measures okay or what is the use of uh, you know calculating relative measures of dispersion so absolute measures are expressed in the same unit in which the observations are given okay suppose for example you have a data of height of the people okay so it may be in centimeter in maybe in meter okay so the absolute measures of dispersion are expressed in the same unit in which the observations are given okay if the height is given in terms of centimeter then you will get the absolute measures of dispersion in centimeter again okay and uh, these measures are useful for comparing variation in two or more distribution where units of measurements are same okay that means this cannot be used for comparing the variability of the distribution which are expressed in dissimilar units and uh, absolute measures of dispersion have two types first one is distance deviation measures or measures of limit okay and second one is average deviation measures okay so what is distance deviation measures it measures the distance of the spread between the values in the data set okay it measures the distance from observations to observations we can say okay so the larger the distance between the two values the greater is the variability isn't it if the distance between the two values is very much big in that case we can say that there is large variation present in the data set okay and if the distance between the two values is small in that case we may say that the variability is less in the data okay so range quartile deviation are the examples of distance deviation measures or you can say measures of limit okay and what is average deviation measures it measures the 
average of deviation determined from the measure of central tendency okay so we have discussed that one of the criteria of measures of central tendency is what most of the observation of the data cluster around the value of the measures of central tendency okay that means most of the observations of the data cluster around the averages okay so the average deviation measure will tell us that how much you know uh, distance is there between the observations and the averages you can simply understand like that okay and uh, mean deviation and standard deviation these are the average deviation measures okay so now what is relative measures of dispersion this relative measures of dispersion expressed as a ratio or percentage of all uh, coefficient of the absolute measures of dispersion okay therefore relative measures of dispersion are also called coefficient of dispersion okay and these are pure unit free numbers relative measures are used for comparing variability in two or more distribution having different units of measurement okay so this is the main use of relative measures of dispersion previously we have said that if uh, there are two data set and uh, observations in the two data set uh, have uh, dissimilar units in that case we are not able to compare these two data set by using absolute measures of dispersion okay for this what do you need we need relative measures of dispersion because relative measures of dispersion is a unit free number okay so in that case if the two data set has different uh, you know unit then also we can compare these two data set by using relative measures of dispersion okay and these relative measures of dispersion are what coefficient of variation coefficient of de mean deviation and coefficient of range like that okay so now we will understand what is range range is the most common and easily understandable measure of dispersion and it is simply the difference between the two extreme observation of the data okay so what do you mean by extreme extreme means the least value and the highest value okay so it is a difference between the least value and the highest value which is present within the data okay so for example x max is the maximum value or the highest value present in the data and x mean is the list value or minimum value present in the data then the range will be x max minus x minimum okay so this is the difference between two extreme observations okay and uh, this major of dispersion uses only two observation to calculate about the variability present within the data okay it ignores all the observations which are present in the data okay so this is one of the drawback of the major range okay it is not based on all the observations present in the data okay and merits of range is what it is the simplest measure of dispersion it is very easy to calculate it is very easy to understand and it is independent of change of origin okay and demerits i have already told that it is based on only two observations only two extreme observations hence get affected by fluctuations okay fluctuation means what fluctuation means if outliers are present that means uh, it is you know beyond uh, the limit of the data set if such type of observations are present within the data then range is affected by this fluctuation okay and it is not a reliable measure of dispersion because it is not based on all the observation which is present in the data okay so simply i have given one example to you this is the hemoglobin percentage of 100 uh, cc blood of 15 individuals okay and now you have to calculate the mean okay so observations are given to you now you have to find that what is the maximum value present in the data and what is the minimum value present in the data okay so the maximum value is here 14.9 and minimum value is here 
eleven point five. That's why the range will be fourteen point nine minus eleven point five, which is equal to three point four. You can see that this much variation is present within the data. Okay. So now we come to quartile deviation. So what is quartile deviation? Okay. So before to say what is quartile deviation, it is better to understand what is uh, quartiles. Okay. Because uh, we have to use quartiles to get the measure of quartile deviation. Okay. So quartiles means what? Quartiles divide. The whole distribution or whole data set into four equal parts, okay, which are known as quarters. Okay, the quarters divide the whole data set into four equal parts, and that equal parts, each equal parts, are known as quarters. Okay, so for example, this is the data set, and we draw a line like that. Okay, so. If we have the data set, first we have to do what? First we have to arrange the data, either in ascending or descending order of magnitude, just like we do in case of media. Okay, so first we have to arrange the data either in ascending or descending order of magnitude. Okay, and for median, what we do? Median is the middlemost value of the distribution. After arranging it in descending or ascending order of magnitude, okay. So median is the middlemost value. It means that before median, 50% observations are there, okay. And after median, 50% observations are there, okay. And now we come to quartiles, okay. So I have told you that quartiles divide the whole distribution into four equal parts, okay. It means that how many points will be there? On this line, there will be three points. Okay, this one, this one, and this one. These three points divide the whole data set into four equal parts. Okay, and these parts are known as quarters. Okay, so this is the first quarter. This is the first quarter, and from this point, you can see that before the first quarter, how much observations are there? In the data, there are 25% observation present in the data before the first quarter. Okay, and after this, after the first quarter, there are 75% observations present in the data. Okay, so median. I have already told that median is the middlemost value. In the data after arranging in ascending or descending order of magnitude, and before median, 50% observations are there, and after median, 50% observations are there. Okay, and this is the third quarter. So, before third quarter, how many observations are there? There are 75% observations present in the data before third quarter. Okay, and after it, how much observations present? 25% observations. Okay, so this is the concept of quartiles. First quartile, second quartile, third quartile, and second quartile is nothing but the median. Okay, so now we come to quartile deviation. So quartile deviation is also known as semi-interquartile deviation. Okay, and this is calculated through this formula, which is equal to Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2. So what is this Q3? This Q3 is the Third quartile and this Q1 is first quartile. Okay, so difference of third quartile and first quartile divided by two. So this is quartile deviation. Okay, so what are the merits of quartile deviation? Obviously, it is better than range because it uses half of the data. Okay, in case of range, we can see that range is Using only two observations for calculating the variability within the data. Okay, but quartile deviation uses half of the data. Okay, and it is also independent of change of origin, and uh, it is the best measure of dispersion for open end classes. Okay, if we have open end classes, for example, 
lower limit of the first class interval is not mentioned and upper limit of the last class interval is not mentioned in that case quartile deviation is the best measure of dispersion okay and demerits of quartile deviation again it ignores the 50% of the data okay if it based on all the observation then we can say that it is a good measure of dispersion okay and since the quartile deviation ignores the other 50% of the data so this is one of the demerits of quartile deviation okay and it is again dependent of change of scale and it is not a reliable measure of dispersion because it ignores the other 50% of the data okay now how we find quartile deviation in a data set okay so i have given this example to you to find the quartiles and then quartile deviation for this data okay so data is given to you this is this is the raw data and uh, you know this is ungrouped data okay so for ungrouped data what you have to do first we have to arrange the data either in ascending or descending order of magnitude so now we see that how many observations present within this data okay so there are 16 observations there are 16 observation it means uh, even number of observations present in the data okay so after arranging the data we can see that there are two observations which is coming in the middle of the data okay 10 and 14 okay so here are the number of data values is equal to 16 so what is q2 q2 that means second quartile so second quartile is the median of the given data set okay and since here the number of observations is even median is equal to what it is the average of these two observations which are coming in the middle of the data okay so 10 plus 14 by 2 which is equal to 12 so this is our median okay so it means that 50% observations before 12 and 50% observations are after 12 okay now we will find uh, first quartile so for finding the first quartile what you will do we'll see that uh, how many observations are uh, there before the median okay so there are how many observations 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay again even number of observations present before the median value okay so it is nothing but the lower half of the data okay lower half of the data just before the median okay so before median there are eight observations okay and for calculating q1 what you'll do we just take median of this lower half of the data okay so here also the same case since the even number of observations are there that's why we have to arrange the data either in ascending or descending order of magnitude which are already arranged okay so you can see that 7 and 8 is coming in the middle of the data that's why we take average of these two 7 and 8 okay and we will get 7.5 and q1 is what how we get q1 p1 is the median of the lower half of the data and lower half of the data means it is the observations before the median okay and for q3 we have to see that what is the upper half of the data okay so this is the upper half of the data okay and after getting the upper half of the data we have to take median of the upper half of the data okay and here you can see that 18 and 24 is coming in the middle of the data that's why you have to take the average of these two observations to get the value of q3 so this is equal to 21 okay so here the value of q1 is 7.5 and value of q3 is 21 okay so what will be quartile deviation it will be the difference between these two divided by 2 So 21 minus 7.5 divided by 2, which is equal to 6.5. Therefore, the quartile deviation for the given data is 6.75. Okay. So from this, you can see that if uh, ungrouped data is given to you, how you can calculate uh, the quartiles from that data? Okay. And uh, 
After that, how you can calculate the quartile deviation from that type of data? Okay, now we'll try to calculate the quartile deviation for the group to frequency distribution. Okay, because the calculation of quartiles for group data and ungrouped data are different, that's why we try to cover both the cases. Okay, so that uh, you can calculate for both of the cases. Okay, so here the group frequency distribution is given to you. So group frequency distribution is what? It is when your class interval is there and along the class interval frequencies are given to you. So this is the form of group frequency distribution. Okay, now from this group frequency distribution we have to calculate the quartiles. Okay, so the calculation of quartiles are same as the calculation of median. Okay, which we have discussed in the video of measures of central tendency. Okay, so for calculating median, what you need? We need cumulative frequency. Okay, so class interval is given to you, frequency is given to you, then you have to find the cumulative frequency. Okay, so how we calculate cumulative frequency? We just put the same value of frequency for the first cell. Okay. Frequency of the first cell is 5, first class interval is 5, we simply put 5 here, okay, and after that 5 plus 3, which is equal to 8, then 8 plus 4, which is equal to 12, so in this way, we are going to calculate cumulative frequency for each of the class interval, okay, and finally we get 53, okay, so sum of these frequencies will be equal to 53, okay. This is obvious and you can cross check also if the sum of these uh, frequencies and the last cumulative frequency are not coming same it means that there is some mistake in the calculation okay this is the way of cross check so the formula for quartiles qr r is equal to 1 2 3 okay so it is equal to l plus R into N by 4 minus C divided by F into H. Okay. So what is L? L is the lower limit of the Rth quarter class. Okay. And what is C? C is the cumulative frequency of the class just preceding the Rth quarter class. Okay. And F is the frequency of the Rth quarter class. H is the length or width of the Rth quarter class. Okay. And capital N is the total frequency. And which one is the Rth quarter class? The class corresponding to cumulative frequency just greater than R into N by 4. Just greater than R into N by 4 is the Rth quarter class. Okay. So, same procedure like median. In median also what I do in place of R it will be what? It will be 2 in case of median. Because median means what? Q2. Okay. Q2. So, L plus this will be 2 into n by 4 okay so since we multiply 2 into n by 4 that's why you get n by 2 in case of median just remember that in place of this you get n by 2 minus c by f into h the same formula okay so rth quarter class the cumulative frequency just greater than r into n by 4 is the rth quarter class okay the same formula so using this formula now we can calculate the quartiles first quartile and third quartile okay so for first quartile that means value of r is equal to 1 so it will be n by 4 which is equal to 53 by 4 means 13.25 now we see that the cumulative frequency which is just greater than 13.5 is what so this will be our first quarter class okay 30 to 40 is our first quarter class okay so now we put the lower limit of the first quarter class then this is uh, n by 4 which is 13.25 minus cumulative frequency of the class just preceding the first quarter class which is equal to 12 okay so we put 12 here and then this is f frequency of the first quarter class so frequency of the first quarter class is equal to 3 that's why we put 3 here and then into 10 because the length of the class interval is what? It is 10. Okay. So after calculating we get this is 34.167. Okay. So similarly we calculate the third quartile. Okay. 
for third quartile means r is equal to 3 so r 3 into n by 4 it means 3 into 53 by 4 so 39.75 so now we look at the class which has the cumulative frequency just greater than 39.75 so 39.75 so which is 45 okay it means that 80 to 90 is our third quarter class okay I'm just putting all the values we can get the value of Q3 which is equal to 82.5 okay therefore QD that means quarter elevation Q3 minus Q1 by 2 so putting these values we get 24.1665 okay so this is the way of calculating quarter deviation if you have the group frequency distribution okay so now we come to our mean deviation so what is mean deviation so this mean deviation is the average deviation measure isn't it so mean deviation is the arithmetic mean of the absolute deviation of the observation from a measure of central tendency okay so if x1 x2 xf are the set of observation then the mean deviation of x about the average a that means the average may be mean, median or mod also. Okay. It will be given by this formula. 1 by small n summation modulus of xi minus a. Modulus means absolute value of xi minus a. Okay. So this is the difference between the observations and the average. This is the absolute difference between the observations and the averages. Okay, so you can see that this is the difference between observations and averages. That's why it is called average deviation measure. Okay, so the formula for mean deviation for group data will be this one. Okay, that means x1, x2 are given. Okay, class intervals are given to you and then frequencies are given to you and you have to find the mean deviation of that data. Okay, so in that case mean deviation is equal to 1 by capital N summation Fi into absolute value of Xi minus A. Okay, and capital N is equal to summation Fi. Okay, so merits of mean deviation, it is based on all the observations. Okay, and it provides the minimum value when the deviations are taken from the media. Okay, so whenever I calculate mean deviation from uh, median, in that case, so whatever value you get, that value will be, you know, less in compared to mean deviation from mean or mean deviation from mod. Okay, and it is independent of change of origin. This is these are the merits of uh, mean deviation, and what are the demerits? It is not easily understandable. Okay. Why it is not easily understandable to other people? Because the calculation is also not easy and, and it is also time consuming. Okay. And it dependent on change of scale. Okay. And uh, the ignorance of negative sign creates uh, artificiality and becomes uh, useless for further mathematical treatment. Okay. So we know that one of the criteria for good measure of dispersion is that it should be useful for further mathematical treatment also okay but here since the mean deviation is ignoring the sign of the you know differences of observations and uh, averages so this will create an artificiality in the measures and uh, that's why it is not uh, you know useful for further mathematical treatment okay so someone may ask that uh, why the actual difference of the observations and uh, averages are not taken. Okay. So it is uh, one of the criteria of measures of central tendency that uh, if we take the difference of the observations with their averages. Okay. And then sum it all. In that case we get that value is equal to 0. Okay. So if we find the that value which is equal to 0 and if we put actual difference in place of the absolute difference which is used in the formula of mean deviation then we will get what the value of mean deviation will be equal to 0 ok it means there is no variation within the data isn't it so because of that we ignore the sign because of this only the absolute concept is introduced in case of mean deviation okay so now we have to find the mean deviation 
for a ungrouped data. Okay, so past rate is given to you. There are five observations only, and you have to find the mean deviation of this data. Okay, so for this, what you have to do first, you have to find the mean or median or mod. Okay, for which it is asked for. Okay, for example. Uh, here we calculate for all the three mean, median, and mod. Okay, so that you can understand how we can calculate the mean deviation about mean or mod or median. Okay, so here we calculate all the three measures first: mean, median, and mod. Okay, and it is coming out 78. Median is also 78. Mod is also 78. Okay, now we calculate mean deviation about median. And what is the formula? This is 1 by n summation x i minus x bar. Absolute value of x i minus x bar. Okay, so absolute value of first observation, which is 75 minus 78. 78 is the mean. Okay, plus this one 80 minus 78. Plus 79 minus 78, then 78 minus 78, then 78 minus 78. That means the absolute differences. Okay, so we get this one, 1.2. Okay, and since here the mean, median, and mod all are equal, that's why mean deviation about mean or median or mod will be is equal to 1.2. Okay, so this is the way of calculating mean deviation when Ungrouped data is given to you. Now we calculate the mean deviation for frequency distribution, or you can say group frequency distribution. Okay, so for that we use the same example for which we calculate our quartile deviation. Okay, so here class interval is given to you, frequencies are given to you. Okay, now we need x i. Okay, now we need x i. So how we get x i? So this x size are nothing but the mean values of this class interval. Okay, it means 0 plus 10 by 2, which is equal to 5. Okay, for each of the class interval, we calculate the mean values. So 5, then 15, then 25, then 35, like that. Okay, so we calculate the mean values for each of the class interval. Now we need the value of mean also. Okay, and the Formula for mean for group frequency distribution is what? It is one by capital N summation F I X I. Okay, that's why you need to calculate this column also F I X I. So F I X I means just simply multiply this frequency and mean values. Okay, and you get this column. Okay, and after that you take uh, the absolute difference of uh, X I and uh, X bar. Okay, so after calculating this F I X I, we calculate the sum of all these observations. Okay, sum of this, which is equal to three one one five. So now we calculate the mean, which is equal to one by capital N summation F I X I. So three one one five divided by fifty three, since our total frequency is equal to fifty three. Okay, so mean is coming out fifty eight point seven seven. Okay, so Here we calculate the mean deviation about mean only. Okay, and you calculate mean deviation about median and mode also. Okay, so x i. This is our x i five. Okay, five minus fifty eight point seven seven, which is equal to fifty three point seven seven. Okay, if we take the difference of five minus fifty. 58.77 it will be minus 53.77 okay but since we are taking the absolute value that's why it will be 53.77 okay so in this way we calculate the x i minus x bar for all the class interval okay and after that we have to multiply this uh, factor with f i okay so this is f i into modulus of x i minus x bar Okay, and after calculating this for all the class interval, we have to sum it all, and the sum is 13.26.04. Okay, and after getting all these, we put it in the formula to get the value of mean deviation about mean. So the formula is 1 by capital N summation F I into modulus of X I minus X bar. So which is equal to 13.26.04 divided by 53. So which is equal to 25.02. It means that the mean deviation about mean is equal to 25.02. It means that 
this much variation is present within the data okay according to the mean deviation about mean okay now we go for standard deviation and it is the most important measure of dispersion which are basically used in nursing okay so what is standard deviation how we calculate standard deviation standard deviation is the positive square root of the arithmetic mean of the squares of the deviation of the given values from their arithmetic mean okay standard deviation is the positive square root okay of the arithmetic mean of the arithmetic mean of the squares of the squares of the deviation deviation this is the deviation of the given value this is the given value okay from their arithmetic mean this is their arithmetic mean this is the given values values present in the data and this is the mean of this value okay and this is the deviation x i minus x bar this is the deviation and x i minus x bar whole square this is the square of the deviation of the given values from their arithmetic mean okay and this is the arithmetic mean of the square of the deviation of the deviation of the given values from their arithmetic mean okay and square root positive square root okay so this is the formula for calculating standard deviation and standard deviation is usually denoted by the greek letter sigma okay and it is also referred as root mean square deviation okay and uh, if we break this formula we can get this one 1 by n summation x i square minus x bar square okay where x bar is what x bar is the mean of the observations okay and now for a group frequency distribution it is this one this is the formula for calculating standard deviation for group frequency distribution 1 by capital n summation f i into x i minus x bar whole square okay and if you break this formula then we will get this one square root 1 by capital n summation f i x i square minus x bar square okay and x bar is this one 1 by capital n summation f i summation f i x i and capital n is equal to summation f i okay so if we take the square of the standard deviation this will give us what this will give us the variance variance of the data okay so variance is also a measure of dispersion so the formula of variance is simple this one sigma square is equal to 1 by n summation x i minus x bar whole square for uh, ungrouped data and for group data will be one sigma square is equal to 1 by n capital n summation f i into x i minus x bar whole square that means you don't need to write the square root if we calculate the variance because variance is the square of the standard deviation okay so i hope now you understand what is standard deviation what is the formula okay standard deviation is the positive square root of the arithmetic mean okay this formula is for arithmetic mean of the deviation this is the deviation of the given value this is the given value from their arithmetic mean okay so now we find the standard deviation for ungrouped data and for this we use the example 3 okay which is a data for a pulse rate okay and there are only five observations okay sorry there is some mistake in typing okay i just forgot to give the square root here okay so please correct it so this is the formula so you just uh, put 1 by 5 since 5 observations are there okay and then observations first observation 75 minus the mean which is uh, 78 which you calculate before okay so square plus 80 minus 78 whole square like that if we do like that then you get square root of 14 by 5 which is equal to square root of 2.8 okay and you have to find the square root of this so please calculate it okay and tell me in the comment section okay now we'll see that how we'll calculate uh, standard deviation for group data okay so this is the same example which you use for mean deviation also okay so 
classroom table is given to you pk cases are given to you and i already told you how to calculate the mean values for each of the class intervals okay you simply check the average of the class interval okay and then fi xi which you already calculated for mean deviation also okay now calculate the difference okay so in case of mean deviation we see the absolute difference of the observations and the average okay here we take the original difference at first and after that we have to square it we have to square it so in the next column what we do we calculate fi into xi minus x bar whole square as we want this value for the final calculation of standard deviation okay so fi into xi minus x bar this is our fi and then phi into what you do phi into minus 53.77 whole square okay we multiply this and we get this value for 14457.99 okay like that so we calculate for all the class interval okay and after getting the values for all the class interval we sum it all okay and we get this one 4504529 okay and uh, we know that x bar is 58.77 okay so sigma is equal to square root of 1 by n summation fi into xi minus x bar whole square okay now we put all these values in this formula so capital n is equal to 53 so 1 by 53 into this value so we get this one okay and after taking the square root we get 29.15 okay so this is the way to calculate the standard deviation if group data is available to you okay so i hope now you understand how to calculate the range how to calculate the quartile deviation and mean deviation and standard deviation for both group data and ungrouped data okay now we go for coefficient of dispersion okay coefficient of dispersion that means uh, relative measures of dispersion okay so relative measures of dispersion when i use that means when the two data are there more than two data are there and they have uh, different uh, units of measurement in that case if you want to compare these uh, data in that case we require relative measures of dispersion okay and coefficient of dispersion is the measure of uh, relative measure of dispersion okay it is a relative measure because we use so all the measures so absolute measures so we calculate earlier that is range mean deviation quartile deviation and standard deviation all these measures we use for calculating these coefficients okay so this points i have already told to you that uh, uh, that is when the series are there they are of uh, different uh, uh, Units. In that case, if you want to compare, then only we go for relative measures of dispersion. Okay. So this is the coefficient of range. That means based on range, what is the coefficient of dispersion? This is the formula. X max minus X minimum divided by X max plus X min. Okay. And based on quartile deviation, this is the formula. Q3 minus Q1 divided by Q3 plus Q1. Q3 is the third quartile. Q1 is the first quartile. okay so based on mean deviation so coefficient of mean deviation is equal to mean deviation divided by average from which it is calculated okay that means you have to divide that average for which you calculate the mean deviation okay if you calculate mean deviation from mean then you have to divide it by mean if you calculate mean deviation from median then you have to divide it by median if we calculate mean deviation about mod then you have to divide it by mod okay and for standard deviation this is standard deviation by mean why mean because for calculating standard deviation we all the time use mean only okay that's why it is standard deviation by mean so what is coefficient of variation so coefficient of variation is nothing but the 100 times the coefficient of dispersion based on standard deviation okay and this is the formula simply standard deviation by mean into 100 okay sigma by x bar into 100 okay so i have already discussed uh, the concept of range quartile deviation mean deviation standard deviation okay so all four majors i have discussed uh, i have discussed 
the concept i have discussed how to calculate it for both group data and our group data okay now you people take an example and calculate the coefficient of variation for that okay you can calculate for the same example which you have taken okay and range and quartile deviation these are the distance deviation measure of dispersion and mean deviation standard deviation these are the average deviation measure of dispersion okay and all the four comes under absolute measures of dispersion okay and coefficient of variation coefficient of range coefficient of quartile deviation mean deviation these are the coming under relative measure of dispersion okay so now i hope it is now clear to you what is dispersion what is the importance of dispersion and what is variability in the data okay and how we can calculate or how we can measure the variability present within the data okay so if you find this video helpful then please share this with your friends also okay so that they can also get benefit from this video okay thank you thank you so much for watching my video thank you